everybody. This is Tony Turner, and welcome to the market now as of Friday, March 25th, at about 3 p.m. Eastern. Well, in the housing market's busiest season, pending home sales, which measure signed contracts on existing homes, fell 4.1% in February compared with January, according to the National Association of Realtors today. The report noted that sales were down 5.4% compared with February 2021. Analysts were expecting a slight gain. This is the fourth straight month of declines in pending sales, which are an indicator of future closings one to two months out. <clears throat> now, interest rates began rising in January and continued sharply higher in February. The average rate on a 30-year fixed mortgage is now more than a full percentage higher than it was a year ago. And you know what? As of today's date, 30-year fixed mortgage comes in at 4.95%. Wow, that's a big move. Okay, so on that cheerful note, <laughs> let's go on to the three charts that could give us some insight into the week to come. First of all, as we always do, we're going to look at a daily chart of the S&P 500 spider, symbol SPY. Uh, and as you all know, this is the exchange-traded fund that closely follows our benchmark S&P 500 index. <clears throat> now, we know that the SPY's last closing high, uh, all-time closing high, excuse me, took place on January 3rd at $477.71. Uh, since then, it had quite a ride, and when I uh, captured this chart today, the SPY was trading at $450.21. That's about 6% below the all-time high. Now, we know that the SPY rolled over from the January highs up here, rolled over, um, danced for a few days on the 50-day, the green line, and the red line, the 200-day, uh, excuse me, the 20-day moving average, then fell down lower into January, consolidated here, uh, moved on down here. I guess where, where were we here? About 428 or so. Moved back up over the 200-day moving average, the 20, and tried to get back over the 50 in February. Could not do it. Then fell down even harder, uh, right down to this low here. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm trying to find this low here. Well, let's call it 410. I think it was 412, actually, from memory. It gapped down there at the open uh, near the end of February, and uh, of March, uh, February 24th, exactly, and made a low at $410.64. Then it rallied back up, tried to get over the 20-day, couldn't, couldn't make it to the 200-day, came back down, and... Um, and came in here at about 415, 418, held on there and consolidated. Fortunately here, what I've been looking for is we've got a couple of higher lows, higher lows. Now here was the downtrend right here, and it was quite a trend. Uh, but we broke out of it. The S&P broke out of it in March, rallied back up, uh, moved in the last couple of days, trading days, over the 200-day moving average, which is a darn good thing. And is now, as I said today, at about 3.45 p.m. Eastern, it's trading at $450.21. So now we have nearby resistance here at 458. Uh, we can then look up here at 473. We, um, we do have support at the two, if you can barely see it here with all the lines. Today, the 200-day moving average is coming in right below price at 446.59. So we can call it 447 if you want. So we do have potential support here. Then we have potential uh, price and moving average, 50-day moving average coming in here. Price and moving average support potentially at 440. Uh, then, of course, we've got the move down to 418 which would be another, that would be a big oh no <laughs> if that happened. So we'll draw a little trend line here. It'll come up like this. We'll, it'll put it at about 
425, 426. We can put that trend line there. The downtrend has been broken. That's a good thing. But now to keep it, we want the SPY ideally to stay above the 50-day moving average coming in at about 440. That would be very nice. Better yet, if it could stay above the 200 at 446. But look, you guys, in the coming week, we have got three major concerns and a bunch of little ones. We have got inflation. We have rising interest rates. Uh, and we have, as you all know, sadly, the situation in the Ukraine. So we don't know from day to day what's going to happen. Uh, nobody on, in the world knows what's going to happen in the stock market, especially in the next week or two for sure. So please trade safely and please protect your capital at all times. All right, our next chart for today is a chart of the Invesco QQQ, symbol QQQ. As you all know, this, <coughs> excuse me, is the ETF that represents the NASDAQ 100, a major index in the market. And it has top holdings, of course, you all know, uh, represent Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, Alphabet, uh, Facebook, Netflix, all of those big momentum dudes. Now, when I captured this chart today, the QQQ was trading at $356.79. This is about 11% below the all-time uh, closing high back here, way back in November at 403. So at 11% below that high here, we're still in correction territory we would get out of it if the Qs could go back up higher. Uh, the, the, the line is 10% when, when, when um, an asset is trading 10% or more below its all-time high, then we say it is in correction territory. For, we know that from, the, from January here, the QQQ, uh, it started at about $402 up here, just about, fell down to the 335 level, uh, moved down really hard down here to the 335, fell through the 20, the 50, the 200. I mean, it was just ugly. Uh, managed to consolidate in January uh, down at right at the 335 level. Then it did manage to get a short squeeze and some buyers came in, bounced it up above the 200 day, um, but it couldn't get any higher than that. Then it finally rolled over again. And here in February, as we know, on February 24th, that was a low for a lot of the market. It came down and opened at 318 and established that, that low. Then it rallied back up to 350, up to the 300-day moving average. And this trend line, which you can start drawing anywhere along in here, uh, and then extended out as the trend went down. And this is a darn near perfect trend line, sadly, to the downside. But at any rate, and it was helped being drawn by the 20-day moving average. So we got down here to 318, rallied back up. And then, of course, uh, the weak hands, as we say, sold off. And it retested the lows back down in the middle of March, back down to 318. So it couldn't make a higher low here. Note that. But it did. Uh, it retested to the prior lows and did stay there, thankfully, didn't make a lower low. That's what we don't want. So the Qs broke out of the downtrend here in the mid part of March, just like the S&P did. You see how it moved through, held these lows. And then uh, for a double bottom here, if we want to call that the bottom reversal pattern, we can... Then for it to legally break out, it has to break over, I'm going to call it the midpoint of the W, okay, because that's a double bottom and it's a valid one. Now we just hope it keeps trading in the way that it should to um, confirm it. So we're back up over the midpoint of the W. That's a good thing. That's a positive thing. Again, and back up above the 50-day moving average at 356.79. So... What we have here to the upside to get in our way is the 200-day moving average, which is coming in at 368.43. What we want the Qs to do, if the Qs were to be normal here, they would, I mean, if the double bottom, I should say, were to be a good solid one here, it should trade sideways, and I'm not sure how to do this on this chart, but it would trade sideways like this 
and then it would break out again. That would be a perfect double bottom pattern, uh, certainly a bottom reversal pattern if the Qs have that strength con considering what we have going on with inflation and interest rising rates and the uh, Ukrainian situation. Be great if it could move back up. Um, we do want it to definitely stay above this midpoint of the W, which is also where the 50-day comes in at 349, uh, to stay positive. <clears throat> Absolutely, positively, no kidding around. It's got to stay above this 318 level. That's no kidding around at all. So we do have support down here, potentially support price and moving average support at, four, at 349, excuse me. And then, of course, on down here to 320, 318. So just this is this is this is this is a better looking chart than than I, I thought possible. I was on vacation the last two weeks. This is a good looking chart. Does it look like a bottom? Yes, but we are rarely in a situation as we are now with with world leaders and uh, the Ukrainian situation being in such turmoil. So uh, <clears throat> please trade carefully because every day brings new news. And um, I hope and pray that the news starts being good news on that front. Okay, our final chart for today is the IYZ, the iShares US Telecom ETF. Uh, now, I am staying conservative now, as I just mentioned to you. I'm, I'm not sure what's going to happen in the next few weeks, and neither does anyone else know the answer to that. I, I was looking for a bottom fishing play. Uh, fingers crossed I found one. But I am not willing, of course, to, uh, to stay in it past my stops. This is conservative. Again, this is the iShares U.S. Telecom ETF, the IYZ. It has 21 holdings. Top holdings include Cisco, Verizon, Comcast, AT&T, and T-Mobile. Now, in on this chart, it made a, uh, a recent September 2nd high, of course, September of last year high, at $34.78. From that high, it gradually rolled over, made a little continuation pattern here, uh, and, and that looks good. It started out here at, at $34.78. Then it started dropping down in September past the 50-day, the 20-day, the 200-day. Made a little bottom here in October down to like $31.60 down here. Rallied back up to about $33. Then fell even harder, as everything else did too. In November, many things did. And then rallied back, but look how it keeps going up to this 33 line here, this 33 level. Back up over the 200-day uh, moving average, the black line, then fell hard again in January. And as you will note, if you'll think back to the look chart of the SPY and the, and the QQQ that we just talked about, they also fell in January. Fell down hard, uh, fell down to these lows here, right about 29-ish then did that dumpster dive that everybody else did on February the 24th and <clears throat> fell down to this low here at 2850 at 2850 now uh, then it made it rallied back up to the 20 day couldn't go any higher came back down but made a slightly higher low here that's what i'm looking for is higher lows now let's look back here and you can say well tony this made an even low and it bounced back up and, and, and almost broke the, the downtrend, true short-term downtrend, and then rolled over again. Yep, that's right. You guys, that's called the stock market. That was a very promising pattern and it didn't work. <laughs> okay, that's why we use protective stops. So am I saying now that this is the bottom for the IYZ? No. I'm saying it looks promising. It looks like there's more volume coming into it recently. Uh, and it could easily roll over along with everything else if that's what the market does. So that is why I am going to be, this is a very conservative ETF. Telecom is conservative, although it is technology. Uh, so I'm going to be careful here, but, and with the volume it has coming into it, MACD is hitting its head on the zero line here. The 50-day move, moving average is rolling over. I might just take a slight chance here 
but I will have a hard stop in, meaning a star stop with my broker. So let's go back to the chart. <clears throat> if, and you can see the 50-day moving average coming down here at $30.20, right? Okay, all right. Now, we know the lows here are around $28.50. Oh, I did want to tell you, if you look at a longer-term chart, like a monthly chart, you will see that there is quite a bit of support uh, going back actually quite a few years at this line here, right around uh, $28 to $29. There is quite a bit of support in there. So uh, in the coming week, if the market stays relatively happy and is not falling hard, the market itself, and if the IYZ stays up here, I'd like it to stay up <clears throat> certainly above... Uh, this zone right in here at 29. If it stays above that, I will add a small position to my trading portfolio. And my stop on this is going to be $27.96. Now, of course, you're, you're certainly welcome to raise or lower yours to whatever you want. But I'm going to use a stop at $27, an initial stop at $27.96. If and when the IYZ closes above the 50-day moving average. And right now that's coming in at not too far from price, uh, actually at $30.20. So I want it to close above the 50-day. Close is the operative word here. If that happens, I will add more shares to my portfolio. And of course, by then I will have a trailing stop. So you may want to keep an eye on the IYZ, excuse me, IYZ in the coming week. And now please know that this is the perfect time to invest in yourself. Sometimes I take times like these that tend to be a little rocky and I pull back most all of my trades and I go into study mode. That's how I do it. And I found that's a really good idea. So uh, it could be for you too. Take a few minutes to check out my online training programs so that you can become a better trader. These programs include our flagship training, Seven Steps to Successful Trading, How to Swing Trade Successfully, one of our most successful training programs, How to Trade the Trend to Profits for those who want to kind of uh, use a slower um, but very, um, very profitable way to trade, How to Read Charts, that's great for novices, so is Three Winning Setups. And one that here that's really a good idea right now is how to bottom fish like a pro. And we have many more programs that you can see if you check it out. To see all of my online programs, simply go to the link on this screen right here or simply click on the orange button below. So until next week, keep green on your screen. I'm Tony Turner, and this is The Market Now.